In this video, we're going to cover continuous outcomes and use summary statistics rather than raw data. Uh, there's an accompanying video to this that looks at binary outcomes using raw data. So this way we're covering all of our bases. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, uh, get to our data for the week. So we're going to use academic in this case. Anticoag was for binary. Now we're in academic. So I'll just copy this to my clipboard. Now while we're here, this is ID, this is just some number, doesn't really matter. It's just the order in the table. Um, the author is the first author's last name and year would be the year the study was published. This is just bookkeeping stuff, doesn't really matter. Feedback matters. So what they did, uh, they looked at studies that used writing reflection assignments um, and in one group, not in another, and looked at academic performance in a variety of subjects across a, a bunch of grade levels. Um, so lots of different studies included in here, but the whole idea that they're testing is if you make students write a reflection, does it improve the performance on exams and quizzes? And what we have here are some summary statistics. So there's how many students were in the study. So we got our sample size. Um, we have our standardized mean difference, right? So this would be the number of standard deviations that the writing assignment group differed from the non-writing assignment group. And positive values mean better academic performance with the writing reflection. Uh, variance is our, well, as it says there, pooled variance uh, for that standardized mean difference. So this is my error estimate I'm going to use to combine these together in SPSS. Okay, with that in mind, oh, we got our final, sorry, feedback column. We do care about this. This is whether or not the student got feedback on their writing reflection. One yes. Zero, no. Because we might expect that feedback would impact the, the outcome. So we'll copy this and we'll head on into SPSS as usual, paste this in, and we're good to go. Alrighty, so let's go now to analyze meta analysis. And in this case, not binary, but continuous outcomes, pre calculated effect size. All right, so the effect size here would be my standardized mean difference. And my error estimate is the variance. Notice not standard error, so I'm going to select variance there. The study ID, I can use a number of things. I could use ID, doesn't mean much to me, so I'll put an author. Um, we could add the IDs to study labels. I'm not going to worry about it. Again, we want random effects here. We don't want to assume that every study will show the same thing. And what we're going to go into here now, uh, criteria, again, doesn't matter. Analysis, we do care about. We're going to do a subgroup analysis based on feedback. We kind of care about that. So we'll do that. Uh, inference, again, we're not going to touch, right? We go in here. It's just your boring under the hood stuff, right? Don't sweat that. Don't change it. Uh, bias, okay, we do want to see if maybe there's publication bias. So we'll just click on that Eggers regression. Trim and fill, we won't worry about again. Uh, print, always nice to get these. Homogeneity and heterogeneity measures. These are explained in the binary outcomes video. And again, a prediction interval. Save I won't worry about because I'll get all that in my plots. So for the forest plot, I um, really just want sort them based on feedback. We'll get our effect size confidence interval. And wait. We, of course, want to annotate and put in that null effect size line. And again, we want a funnel plot. That way we can consider whether or not we have any risk of publication bias. All right, we don't care about these first couple of tables. They don't mean much. Okay, our subgroup analysis. What are we seeing? What's the effect size? So about 0.15 standard deviations um, without the feedback. Looking at the confidence interval, ooh, we got negative and positive. In other words, no real difference in uh, learning outcomes when you use writing reflections but don't offer feedback. With feedback, number one here, now we're about a quarter of a standard deviation, and I'll believe anywhere between 0.16 and about 0.36 standard deviations. Okay, great. Now, am I going to see the same thing in every study on this topic? No, the prediction interval is negative and positive in both of these cases, indicating probably some degree of heterogeneity in uh, what's uh, reported within these two groups. And indeed, we look at our test for homogeneity. Uh, absolutely, we're going to reject that null. Yes, there is heterogeneity. How much? 
Okay, we can look at our good old I square. It's a nice kind of percentage. And we're floating in this kind of moderate range, a bit more in the no feedback category. Eh, but overall, somewhat heterogeneous uh, measurements there. Why we'd want to inspect this is if we have some subgroup uh, analysis that totally separates two things and explains the heterogeneity, then we would see the overall heterogeneity drop in these groups. It's remaining largely the same, which tells me while there might be differences between feedback and no feedback, that's not the only variable that matters. There are probably other variables that influence the learning outcomes. Okay, and again, we're looking at the Eggers regression uh, test here. We're looking for that intercept. Notice it's not significant. P is way bigger than 0.05, negative and positive in the confidence interval. So I'm not expecting to see any signs of publication bias. The four, I'm sorry, the funnel plot should be symmetric. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and jump to that and we'll run back to our forest plot. Hey, look at that. It's symmetric, right? A little wide, but symmetric. All right, back to the forest plot. So here we are. We've got all of our individual studies. Again, the size of the square indicates the weight. We've got our confidence intervals. Notice that uh, all of these but two cross the zero. Oh, sorry, three. Ah, four. Look at me. Okay, all but four cross this null line here. So there's four studies that show significant effects. Three of them are favoring the writing assignment. One is not. So we've got some heterogeneity. Uh, same story here. Now with one, notice we have far greater number of studies that are significant, right? They're not including zero as a potential value for the standardized mean difference. Looking at our confidence intervals, these look a little bit different to me. This one's a whole lot wider up here with no feedback, um, narrower with feedback, right? Overall, we would say that writing assessments on the average, improved learning outcomes by maybe somewhere between 0.13 and 0.31 standard deviations. Okay, because remember this is a standardized mean difference. What that means, I don't know. We'd have to think about the standard deviation of the outcome. I guess generally half a standard deviation is usually considered important, but that's a rule of thumb that could absolutely be wrong. Um, you can see estimates, ooh, sorry about that. You can see estimates are quite a bit different though. Right, with, with feedback compared to without. If we go back up to our table here, comparing those in a more compact format. And then we might ask, are these different, right? So what is the difference that feedback makes? It looks like without feedback, we're not seeing anything. And with feedback, we have an effect. So how can we summarize that? Now we need to do meta regression. So we'll go analyze meta analysis, meta regression. This is going to calculate the difference between the feedback and no feedback studies. So the effect size is again the standardized mean difference. Variance is going to uh, be included here. And the factor is feedback. That's what I'm looking at here. And we don't care about the top two. Uh, print does matter. If you don't select this, it doesn't tell you anything that matters. So select both of those. And we won't save anything. We'll just click OK. And now we've got our meta regression output. We don't care about these um, or really uh, this. And then we'd come down here and look at our parameter estimates. OK, intercept is the effect of feedback. And feedback uh, zero. OK, what's the effect of not getting feedback? Well, you're on the average 0.12 standard deviations lower, but hey, the difference isn't significant. Okay, so here we've done a formal test to say, is there really a difference with feedback and not? We don't know, not, not based on this evidence. We can't conclude that. Um, there's a chance that the effect is the same. And you can see here, while the, my goodness, hopefully you didn't just get seasick there. Okay, the confidence interval for no feedback while much wider than the confidence interval for with feedback, notice that they are largely overlapping. So there might be something going on here, but man, there's a lot of heterogeneity. Maybe there's some other variables we need to account for. 
um, using meta regression with multiple factors. We're not going to do that here. We're going to wrap this up for our continuous outcomes video. Uh, again, if you have questions, make sure you drop them in the questions box.